I'm joined this morning by President Obama's Chief of Staff, Dennis McDonough. Dennis, thanks so much for being here. It's, uh, it's quite a thing to have you here on the last Sunday of the Obama well, presidency. I appreciate very much the chance to be with you, Jake. So let me ask you, there are now at least 18 House Democrats who are boycotting the Trump inauguration. Does President Obama think that's appropriate, or do they think, does he think they should follow his lead and attend for the sake of honoring the office and the peaceful transfer of power? Well, the president has made very clear uh, since uh, the election that we should do everything in our power in this transition period uh, to make sure that the next president and his team are up and ready to go. In fact, on Tuesday night in his speech, he called him the freely elected president uh, of the United States. So uh, that's the charge that we've taken. By the same token, these uh, Democrats and others have pointed out that they've got significant concerns. And we have found some of those concerns. The intelligence shows that the Russians did intervene. They did intervene with the purpose of helping uh, one candidate and hurting, hurting the other. So these are by no means uh, trivial concerns. So my hope would be that the president-elect will reach out to somebody as consequential and as somebody who is such a leader as John Lewis, who has done so many things over the course of his life, to try to work this out. And hopefully not just reach out to him, but pursue some of the policies that Mr. Lewis has literally fought bled and gone to jail for over the course of his remarkable life. And that would be the kind of thing that would not only send a message to the American people that we're prepared to work together, but would also send a message to the Russians that we are united. Their efforts to divide us, to weaken us, uh, to advance their own interest at the expense of ours are going to fail. But and just to be clear, though, President Obama thinks that President-elect Trump is legitimate. The president has made very clear that he believes that he is uh, the freely elected president. He will be inaugurated on Friday, and he will come into, off into office, hopefully uh, strengthened by the kind of transition that we've tried to run in this White House. As somebody who saw his own legitimacy questioned repeatedly as president, President Obama, including by the incoming president-elect, Donald Trump, with that birther nonsense, does he think that Democrats should put this away, this whole idea of legitimate, illegitimate? The president's not going to get in the middle of this right now. I, th I think what ultimately uh, the president, uh, president-elect Trump's success will be determined by his ability to implement the kinds of policies and to have the kind of success that we've had over the course of this administration. Take one of the issues that I think uh, he mentions over the course of the last several days, which is crime. Crime is down. Crime is way down. In fact, crime is down at the same time that the prison populations in this country are down. Uh, that's the first time that's ever happened. So we feel very good about the progress that we've made over the course of these eight years, and we hope that the next president will continue a lot of those policies that have uh, resulted in that progress. Michael McFaul, who was President Obama's ambassador to Russia, put out a tweet this weekend that I want to show you. He wrote, quote, it is unusual for, in for transition teams to have contact with foreign governments the number of calls to Kislyak, Russia, which was Russia's ambassador to the U.S., during the Obama transition was zero. This is a specific reference to President like Trump's incoming national security advisor, Mike Flynn, uh, reaching out to the Russian ambassador several times uh, on and around the day uh, that the Obama White House announced new sanctions and punishments against Russia. Do you have any concerns about those, those uh, calls and attempts to reach out by Mike Flynn? Well, Josh was asked about this on Friday, Jake, and I think he a answered it just just right, which is to say, fact is, the content of the calls is what matters. We have pursued a policy throughout the course of this transition, which is the one that we pursued when we were coming in in 2008, which is there's one president at a time. That's important so that our, uh, the American people know exactly what to expect, and it's also important so that our adversaries are not confused by what we intend to do, by what the United States' position is, and about the the significance of our feeling or our intentions on some particular issue. Do you have any knowledge of what the content of the call was? I don't. Are you concerned at all that it was, don't worry about these sanctions, we will undo them when we get into office? Is I'm not going to get into any particular concerns, but I do think that the content matters, and we'll see what, uh, uh, what that, uh, uh, how that shakes out. About nine days ago, you were in the room when President Obama and Vice President Biden were briefed by the top intelligence officials in the country about not just the intelligence community report on the Russian hacking, but also that addendum that annexed the two-page synopsis about that MI, former MI6 British officer's memos. Uh, I know you're not going to get into the content, um, but Vice President Biden confirmed that that synopsis was there. Uh, and the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, tried to explain it in a statement. He said, part of our obligation is to ensure that policymakers are provided with the fullest possible picture of any matters that might affect national security. 
Do those matters affect national security, or do you agree with President-elect Trump that this is a political witch hunt uh, by the intelligence community trying to hurt him? Uh, look, the president thought it was very important to ask for this assessment of what, uh, what precisely happened in our election in 2016, but not just in 2016, also in 2012 and in 2008, two elections that he stood in. And in fact, in 2008, as you know, Jake, and as everybody knows, we were also hacked at that time. But nothing was released. Nothing was released. The point is, it's important for the president, it was important to the president, that we get a full and complete assessment from the intelligence community so that we could brief that to policymakers who would stay here and the incoming policymakers so that they can come up with policy and implement that policy to ensure this doesn't happen again. We think we got that from the IC in this case. But about the synopsis, do you think that including that was uh, the intelligence community trying to mess with Donald Trump, trying to get uncorroborated rumors out there in a sneaky way? I have no... Uh, look, the intelligence community is staffed by an unbelievable uh, cadre of professionals who have dedicated their lives and in many cases put their lives at risk uh, to get uh, really critical timely and important information to policymakers. I have no reason to, to believe that the, they pursued this uh, tasking this assignment with anything but uh, the most straightforward professional goals are you, in mind. Are you at all concerned that the Russians have something on Donald Trump? Look I the, job description of chief of staff is to be concerned and to worry about things. But uh, the thing that we're worried about right now is to make sure that the incoming team has all the information, all the readiness, all the preparation that they need, that they can hit the ground running at 12.01 on Friday after the president is inaugurated here, uh, and they take over. I recognize that your hands are kind of tied as to what you can say, but you didn't deny that you were concerned. Look, I'm paid to be concerned about everything. Jake. And that, that's uh, my job description. That's what I do. And that's what I'll continue to do until 12.01 on Friday. A big part of the Obama legacy, of course, is the Affordable uh, Care Act. Uh, Republicans are, have already started the process of repealing it. Um, President Obama has told Democrats, don't rescue Republicans on Obamacare. Make them own it. Start calling it Trump Care. Given how many Americans depend upon the Affordable Care Act and what will come next, um, shouldn't Democrats try to make it as good as possible? Well, I, I'm not sure I know what that quote is. I think that's referring to a, uh, to a leak or a second-hand uh, characterization of what the president said. Here's what I know what the president believes and what the president has said to me, which is that the Affordable Care Act is important to the American people. This isn't a political question. This is 24 million people who now have ha access to health care because of that act. We also have seen historically low cost increases in health care costs over the course of the last four years, year on year on year on year. That's something that we have not seen happen since we started uh, keeping score on these matters. But premiums back right have after. gone up. Premiums have gone premiums up. Premiums go up and down, Jake, it, as a matter of course in healthcare. That's the that's what we call the market. And in fact, what we've seen over the course of time is, over the course of these last four years, historically low cost increases. That's even when you consider out of cost, uh, out of pocket costs like deductibles or copays. That is a fact that's undeniable, and that's what the president is focused on. The politics will work themselves out, okay? What won't work themselves out is 24 million people or the 320,000 people who would get coverage in North Carolina under the expanded Medicaid plan of Governor Cooper, which was put on hold last night by a federal judge. What won't happen is those 320,000 people won't get health care, won't get the peace of mind that you and I have, that all 435 of these people have, and that everybody in the administration has when they get health care coverage at the cost of the American taxpayer. That's what the American people deserve, and it would be a shame, an absolute shame, if this Congress and this next in incoming administration doesn't recognize that fact. You mentioned uh, the intelligence professionals who will steal, still be here after uh, President Obama and his administration leave. There are going to be a lot of bureaucrats and, and people who work in policy who are remaining here. Uh, the Trump transition team uh, has sent out questionnaires to a lot of them. How many of you and who has worked on climate change? Who has worked on gender issues? What do you make of that? These are still your employees, technically. Well, these are the American people's employees. The American people pay them. The American people expect professionalism from them, expect uh, results from them, and that's in the main what they get. We were very concerned about these reports, Jake. We've raised them. Um, uh, a number of us have raised them with the transition team and with uh, the president-elect's team, we've sought and we've received assurances that that was not sanctioned activity and that, in fact, 
uh, that they think it's a bad idea. So we are relieved to hear that. We think that the uh, American people will be relieved to hear that. We think that the federal workforce should be relieved to hear that. Uh, and we'll make sure that we conduct our business just that way until 1201 on Friday. There's still an FBI probe going on with the Clinton Foundation. Uh, Senator Sessions the other day during his confirmation hearing said as Attorney General he would recuse himself from anything having to do with the Clintons, which suggests there's still stuff going on. Is there any discussion right now uh, by President Obama about any sort of preemptive pardon for Bill or Hillary Clinton? I don't know anything about any investigations, and I don't have anything on, on pardons, preemptive or otherwise. How about for um, Edward Snowden or Chelsea Manning? Also, don't like if uh, the president is going to exercise any pardons, it would be con you know, conducted uh, straightforwardly pursuant to our policies, uh, and we'll make those decisions based on the merits, not on the politics of any particular matter. Dennis, you've been with uh, President Obama since he was Senator Obama, giving him advice uh, uh, and then joining his campaign. Um, so what is your favorite one-on-one -on -one memory you ever had with them? The beauty about my one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one, uh, memories, Jake, is that they'll stay that. Um, I've valued my candid relationship with the president, um, the fact that he gives me some good advice, including on how to be a good dad. Uh, that's... Uh, stuff that I'll, I'll take with me, maybe share with my wife, but nobody else. I will say that the thing I'm most proud of, Jake, is an administration now acknowledging that we still have six days left or five days left. Um, that has uh, been historically free of scandal. Uh, and I think that's important, not just because it underscores the president and his uh, and the first lady, uh, Dr. Biden, Vice President Biden's view on how the government should run, and how we should conduct ourselves. But it's also because we set out a White House that said, the institutions have to work. Congress is going to investigate us. They did. We participated in and uh, uh, cooperated with those investigations. Department of Justice. Some would take issue to, with that, just FYI. Well, I'm sure they will. And, mm -hmm. and uh, my, my point, though, is, Jake, is they ought not let down their guard on the importance of the Article I institution, Congress, overseeing the Article II institution, the, pre the president. By the same token, we've let the Department of Justice, the FBI, the courts do their business, and we've not intervened in that. The independence and transparency of that process is very important to the functioning of this democracy. The president's been clear about that with us from day one, and that's why, uh, God willing, we'll leave here on 1201 uh, Friday with that president's record intact. That's an important thing. That underscores the confidence of the American people and the institutions at a time when uh, that... Uh, sometimes seems in question. Most White House Chief of Staffs last, what, two years, year and a half? Well, there's been great ones. You know, Andy Card lasted five and a half years. What, were you were four? Uh, not yet. Not if yet. I make it till Friday. <laughs> I serve at the pleasure, Jake, so let's see if I can make <laughs> you it. Might get, you think you're going to get fired before then? <laughs> I just might. Uh, I don't know. You I, never know. It's this. up to the discretion of the president. Dennis McDonough, thank you so much for being Thanks, here. Thanks, Jake. Really I appreciate, appreciate the it. chat.